Hey everyone, it's Tracy Lynn and Pi. Yes, I wouldn't start class any other way. We must start with a little bit of cat worship. But while you're watching the screen and I'm just kind of moving this floppy cloud creature with no bones around my mat, I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do today. We're dealing with your back. I'm going to give you my go-to old faithful back stretches that make my back feel better when it's not feeling too great. You're going to feel floppy and relaxed, just like this little woodland creature right here that's letting me, at this very moment, massage her shoulders. So let's get into it. Make sure you've got a mat, a comfortable space to move in, some water even. I've got some hot tea with me. So let's take a sip of that together now. We're actually going to start laying down on our backs. Really, no props needed for this class. You can do this with nothing at all. A uh, quick shout out to Yeti. Please sponsor me. Thank you very much. All right. Like I said, we're starting on our backs. So you can lay on down, get nice and comfortable. And once we're down, we're just going to go for comfort. So that could be arms by your side. You can follow me and take your arms up above your head. We're just going to wiggle around, tense the muscles a little bit. Pop quiz. What is it called when you tense and relax? All animals do it. Ah, yes, pandiculation, A plus on that pop quiz. Just giving Pi a little quick scratch. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring our right knee in towards our chest. You can hold on to the back of the hamstring. You can hang on to the front of the shin bone. I know Pi is totally hiding me, but that's okay because you can see what I'm doing just fine. And once the knee is in towards your chest, one of my favorite things to do is to wiggle it around. So I like to imagine that I'm muddling my femur bone in my hip socket. If it's difficult to hold the leg like it was, know that you can just bend the opposite leg to get a little more comfort because I want you to feel like your low spine can pretty comfortably stay in contact with the ground. Now we're going to take this into a twist. Knee is going to come across your body. Now, something I want to emphasize, your knee does not have to touch the ground. So I'm kind of taking my time here to bring the knee a little bit closer. Let the goal be shoulder connection. You can even stack the hips. Maybe that allows you to get a little bit closer. Or you could even go for the comfort route and you can stick pillows or even towels underneath your knees to make this twist a little more manageable. We'll come back to center and we'll switch. So left knee will come in towards your chest. Same thing, hamstring, shin bone, whatever you did on the other side. And we're gonna start with our muddling. So you can move that leg side to side around in a circle. Just try to copy whatever you did on side one. And just a reminder, if you bent the opposite leg on the other side, Doing it here can help keep your low spine on the ground, especially in preparation for the twist. So let's head into it. Left leg comes across your body. Pie's coming on back. Oh, there you go. Perfect example of pandiculation in the animal world. Shout out to Pie for reinforcing all the fun facts that we're learning in this class. All right, we got a few more moments in this twist and then we'll head back to center. Just focusing on your breath. Twists are so, so, so beneficial, not just for the back, but also for your digestive system. Let's start to make our way back onto our backs and we're going for feet on the ground, hip width distance and parallel because we're getting into bridge. Now first, tuck your tailbone Really feel the low abs engage, and then we'll lift your hips into your bridge. Focus on lengthening the front of your hip flexors. If your knees are protesting, walk them out wider and or turn them out if that makes them feel more comfortable. Now I want you to again, feel the length into the hip flexors, feel the activation in the glutes. Just another moment here, we'll bring it on down and we're gonna go for one more just like that. 
Lift into your bridge position. I want you to feel glutes. I want you to feel hamstrings. I want you to feel core. Everything is on and active here. We'll bring it back down to the ground and then we'll hug your knees in towards your chest. Now in yoga, this is called apanasana, but you don't have to hang out in this shape. You can also move your legs in circles. They can go independent of each other. They can go as one. But I did want to offer up something that was more of a hip stretch, but for me is really beneficial for your back because the hips and the back are very interconnected. So in yoga asana, happy baby. The knees are going to be really wide around your ribs setting up for this. Soles of the feet are going to show up towards the ceiling and I want you to keep low spine to the ground as best you can. Now I'm trying to track my knees right down by my sides into the ground. You may feel a lot more tight than me. That's totally normal. Again, hips and spine interconnected. We're just focusing on that stretch. Now, once you bring it back in, let's either do one of two things. You can rock and roll as a little massage for your spine. Once again, pies in the way. But if you're not into rocks and rolls, then you can do this. Just roll over onto one side, use your top arm to push yourself up. Great job, body mechanics, hooray. Now we're gonna go into bound angles. So the soles of your feet are gonna come together, the knees are gonna go wide. Yes, that's what we're doing, Pai. Baddha Konasana, I'll say the Sanskrit. We'll lengthen our spine and we'll move forwards into this back stretch. And we'll boop, maybe. Yes. Boops make everything better. Highly recommend you add a boop in with your Baddha Konasana. <laughs> I feel like this channel is just going to start becoming a yoga and my cat channel. So if you guys are down for that, I'm down for that. Couple more moments in this Baddha Konasana and then we'll move on to our next stretch. All right, setting up for a straight leg fold. Now, first, I want you to bend your knees. Even if you're really advanced and flexible, press your hands into the ground by your side to lengthen your spine and then move forwards any amount. Now, once you feel like you can not go further forwards without losing the sh like sharpness in your spine, the length into your spine, then you can start to zhuzh a little bit with the knees before melting forwards. To me, it's a really nice way to make your hamstrings cooperate with you to really focus this stretch, not just in the hamstrings, but also into the low back. You can flex, you can point, honestly, personal preference, whatever works for you. We'll take our last couple breaths here. And we'll start to bring ourselves up. We'll shift off to one side. We're going into tabletop position. So wrist directly underneath your shoulders, fingertips out nice and wide. We'll arch our back, open up the front of the body, spiral the arms into external rotation, and then press into the ground and round your spine, tuck the tailbone. One thing that I see a lot that may accidentally create tension in other areas of your back is shrugging the shoulders and keeping them in your ears. I want you to keep them away from your ears. Use the muscles of your upper back. Use the rhomboids. Use the subscaps. Now let's head into a twist. Right arm reaches out. Slide it underneath you. This is called thread the needle. Try to create space between your shoulder and your ear. My personal favorite touch to this is crawling the opposite arm forwards and being up on tented fingertips. It feels really good through the shoulders, which is just another auxiliary part to me of the muscles of the back. Let's bring ourselves back out. Maybe you reach the arm just out to the side or you really open up into a twist. And then we'll bring it back down. We'll do the other side. Left arm reaches out. And then we'll thread the needle, shoulder and ear to ground, create space between shoulder and ear. And if you did the extension of the opposite arm with me, add that in, tented fingertips, wrapping the armpit down towards the ground. That's where you're really going to feel the stretch into the shoulders and even into your lats. Let's bring it back, either opening out to the side or your full open heart twist. 
And then we'll bring it down and get ourselves set up for child's pose. So walk your knees wide, bring the toes together, and sit your hips towards your heels. Now, I want to use the word towards specifically because not everybody's hips are going to touch their heels. That doesn't mean you're doing child's pose incorrectly. That's just where your range of motion is today. Now, if you'd rather skip having arm extension, then you can do what I just did. Walk the knees together, reach the arms back behind you. This is called rock, or I've also heard it called embryo pose. We'll take our last couple of breaths here in either your child's pose or your embryo pose. Try to completely soften all the muscles. This is meant to be a very relaxing shape. Now we'll make our way back into tabletop for a back strengthening exercise. We're only doing a couple. Left leg back, right arm forwards. Now levitate both arm and leg, and then we're gonna connect elbow to knee squeeze. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, squeeze. Keep going on your own, and I want you to feel the muscles activate in the back body, especially through your back muscles, through the shoulder, and through that extended leg. Bring it back down and we'll do the other side. Right leg back, left arm forwards. Stabilize through the anchored shoulder and bring it in elbow to knee. Inhales and exhales, just like your cat cow, but you've just added an arm and a leg. Luckily, this class doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It's for free on YouTube. Thanks, you guys. Even if you're just hanging out, you found me or your subscribers, it means so much. Now we'll bring everything back and we're gonna head into downward facing dog. <sighs> How are your hamstrings feeling? Check them out a little bit. Wiggle hips from side to side, bend into your knees. Nobody said that if your heels don't touch the ground that you're doing something wrong here. If anything, I encourage people to bend their knees so that they can try to create a really elongated spine and control through their shoulders. Now we'll make our way to the front of our mat and we're gonna do our very last shape here, malasana or deep squat. Now for some of us, this might not be the accessible depth for you. Maybe the heels are floating off the ground. If that's you, I want you to take advantage of your mat or a towel, step your heels onto the edge and head back down into that shape. See if that helps you feel more comfortable, a little more pitched forward, a little more balanced. Uh, also, I like using Melasana to take a sip of tea. So join me if you have tea or if you have water, take a moment to hydrate or technically in my case, dehydrate because I guess tea dehydrates you. I'm also trying to get Pi's attention, but you know, cats, they like to play hard to get. <laughs> we'll spend our last few moments of breath here. You guys are doing great. This is it. You did it. Shortest, sweetest, back stretches, back activators. My best advice is to try to add these into a daily routine or a weekly routine. To exit this shape, you can just stand up, turn the feet to parallel. If you're standing on that mat, let it wiggle out. And I hope you feel accomplished. I hope this class was... Uh, helpful. It's a class that I've been meaning to do for a while. So uh, it means so much that you guys suggest classes. It means so much that you guys subscribe to my YouTube, that you're members of my Patreon. Truly, 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 thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the furry bottoms of this cat's belly. Thank you because I buy her really expensive cat food. All right. I'll see you guys next time.